Welcome back to TarHillIllustrated.com, or if you're watching on our YouTube channel, Tar Hill Illustrated. I'm THI staff writer Jacob Turner, and joining me as he always does, our very own publisher, Andrew Jones. And Andrew, before we dive in to our thoughts and, and kind of our takeaways from Carolina's open practice today in Keenan Stadium, I'm going to go ahead and plug our website real quick, TarHillIllustrated.com. Sign up before April 25th this month. Don't pay until August 5th. I mean, you get all access to our premium message boards. We put a ton of stuff in our premium message boards that we do not report on the front page. So a lot of incentive to go on there. I'm on the boards. AJ's on the boards all the time. Dean at King's on the boards. David Sisk is on the boards. Every member of our staff is on there all the time. So make sure you go do that. Sign up before April 25th. Don't pay until August 1st. Anything you want to add about that real quick, AJ, before we dive into this thing? No, I just think for me, one of the things I like about it is I'm immersed in the community because I get a ton of yeah, questions. it's cool to interact with people. And, yeah. and I love to read about what a lot of smart people have to say. It's always good to get. We've got a great community over there. It's fantastic. Yeah, it, it's just I enjoy it. Um, it's very time consuming at times, especially in the last couple of weeks because yeah. of everything that's been going on. So big part of my job is not just the content you see on the site or in the videos, a huge part of my job is going on there and interacting and fielding questions and and sometimes pulling people from the ledge mm -hmm. a lot. <laughs> and so I, I do that often and I've become uh, quite skilled at pulling people from the ledge mm -hmm. in this job. So that's uh, certainly one of my duties. Exactly. You can really yeah. get that on the board. So. No, definitely not. Yeah, great place to just interact with us. And like I said, ton of stuff that doesn't go on the front and scoops yeah. and all that exactly. stuff goes yeah, on. Yeah, that's, that's so true about that. Yeah. So, so definitely check that out and sign up at our website, tarillustrated.com. If you click the description below, you'll find a link and you can just click on it and go there. But AJ, let's dive into it, man. This is what we're really here to talk about. Carolina football had an, uh, an open, second open practice, actually, of their spring. We had one a couple weeks ago on a Saturday. Had one again today in Keenan Stadium. Um, practice for about 30 minutes or so, and then scrimmage for the last hour or so of practice. So a lot of it was scrimmage. We were able to do some photo and video of it during that first 30 minutes of it of the practice. So make sure you stay tuned for that over the next couple of weeks and the next couple of months as we kind of roll some clips out and continue to do our tape talk series as well, which if you haven't seen, definitely go check that out. But I thought I thought getting to see them scrimmage and getting to see them play up close is something we just haven't gotten to experience in such a long time with how last year went down with COVID and everything. I mean, we're obviously at all the games, but a lot different of an atmosphere. So it was really cool to just be able to kind of sit in the stands today, you know, spread out a little bit, take off your mask and, and watch some Carolina football for a little bit. Now, before we dive into some specifics, I want to talk about what was your just kind of initial takeaways? Like I like to ask you in a lot of these podcasts um, from the scrimmage, I guess, more specifically, and just, I guess, from the practice as a whole. Well, two weeks ago, that was our first opportunity to be out of practice since the 2019 season. They didn't, weird, didn't? <laughs> yeah, well, they didn't have spring practice last year because the pandemic hit before they were supposed to start. So a lot of what we talked about two weeks ago was, you know, hey, this is great that we're back. We got a chance to see them super up close. It's different when you're right there on the first row. They don't, we're still not allowed on the field, unfortunately. Yeah, uh, that'll, that'll come in time where we're total norm returns. But it's different from the press box than it is when you're right down there in the first row and you're very close to a lot of the like with, with the running backs. You can be literally 10, 12 feet away from where they're doing drills. Mm. Uh, so that was exciting, and we really got to see just how much bigger this team is. But one of the things I enjoyed about the scrimmage today was we pulled back when you. Jenna, Kevin, and I hung out in the same part of the stands together. We were about the 50-yard line, I would say about maybe 25, 30 rows up. And the vantage point was great. First of all, it's the first time I've been in the stands in a long, long time. Yeah, I was about to say, you probably had probably But had we before. got to see them a little bit more like we have seen, like I saw them this past year when I was at all the different games. And, and uh, what I really appreciated about it was that it confirmed everything I saw last week up close, two weeks ago up close. They are bigger. Definitely. And they're big guys that were big last year are still big and they're faster and they're quicker. And there are certain guys that just look like, okay, one of the things they do in college is they build and they get better, they improve, they get stronger, they get quicker, they get faster and they read things better. So they're everything they do is, is more decisive. And I, you know, Sam Howe, I know that it's easy to go hit the low hanging fruit and say Sam Howe's really good. He's awfully impressive. He was impressive today. Yes, and you yeah. know who I'm going to talk about because you were sitting right next to me and we were talking about it. And it was called back because of a hold. He had like a 55-yard scramble up the gut. Yeah, he looked quick. Hey, he went back to pass, 
Nothing was there. He went through his progression very quickly and then darted up the middle, got through the second level and got into the end zone. Now, not allowed to hit the quarterbacks. So maybe the linebackers didn't close on him like they would if it was a real game. So he was able to get through because of that. But I'm telling you, he looked quicker. Mm-hmm. He looked a little bit more elusive. Uh, so that kind of jumped out at me. But then, like, what was it? Maybe 12 plays later, we see Drake May take off and run. Yeah, he was quick to hit. What did we say? He's fast but doesn't look super fast because he's got an impressive stride. Nice stride to him, yeah. So – one of the things I enjoyed about the scrimmage today was we got to see stuff that you won't see in drills. You're not going to see a quarterback scramble in a drill. You're not going to see Kamara Morales catch the ball over the middle, cut to his left, stop, shift gears, and go back the other way and avoid a couple of tackles. You're not going to see that in a drill. What we saw from Ty Chandler today, two weeks ago, we said, hey, we didn't get a chance to see the speed that Matt talks about. Today, we saw him get the ball, go around left end, yep. and just turn his nose up field very quickly. And he went from line of scrimmage to eight yards downfield in a flash. Yeah, it was just and so yeah. there's some of the stuff that Mac has talked about. I could go on and on and on, list, list a lot of examples, and we'll do that during the course of this uh, podcast. But that's what jumped out to me. Today, confirm what I saw two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. This team is bigger. It's much deeper. It's extremely athletic. And it's got tremendous upside because so many of the guys that impress are going to be around for a while. The, the upside of this program, the trajectory of this program, and what you could project for not just this coming year, but the following year and the following year after that, there's no reason to uh, expect North Carolina to do anything but contend at a very, very high level. I think the program is on that cusp right now. Agreed, AJ. I completely agree with everything you said. I liked what you mentioned about Chandler. That was something I kind of wanted to talk about. Just We were finally able to see that speed up field, so I thought that was really impressive from him. And when we saw him in that scrimmage, you say, okay, we haven't really seen a lot of you yet. Now I get why you were as good as you were at Tennessee from just watching him for a handful of plays. But let's dive into – I want to talk about the O-line and the D-line depth first and foremost. I think that was very clear today. Not only the depth, but just the size that Carolina has down there particularly on the defensive side of the ball, because you know, Carolina's D-line wasn't great last year. It's not, you know, it's not get it twisted, for lack of a better word. It, it wasn't the best. And, but I think we're seeing this year, and especially saw it today, I think we're seeing a lot of young guys step up. I mean, Javari Ritzy and Keyshawn Silver are about the same size, it looks like. They look like they've been a part of the program for years. So just the freshmen that Carolina are bringing in, and you got guys behind them that played last year, Clyde Pender, Miles Murphy, uh, came on Rucker, guys like that that would look bigger, look stronger, look faster, look more confident. Flipping over the offensive side of the ball on that line, I mean, you got all five starters back. One thing that I noticed during the scrimmage, which we were kind of doing, especially in the beginning, was kind of noting the rotations and the guys that were going in and out. And, you know, you'd see some guys mix in with that first team on both on both the offensive line and the defensive line and didn't really look like they lose, lost a step. You, you see a little bit more depth, a little bit more comfortability down there with a lot of those guys switching in and out. So I think that was one big thing that stood out to me was not only the size of those guys, not only do they look like more of a legit program in terms of the guys that they have in the trenches, but just the guys that they're able to bring in and out. I mean, it, it's pretty impressive and you can definitely see, particularly on those two um, position groups, the depth is starting to build. Like Mac Brown has mentioned, God, if I got a dollar for every time he said depth, I don't know where I'd be right now since he yeah. came into Chapel Hill. So, yeah, definitely two big – those were two big takeaways um, from today's scrimmage. They're really deep. They now, are. Mm-hmm. I'm going to caution about the defensive line. Mm-hmm. They got a lot of guys over there. I just don't know how collectively they could be on a high, high end. Mm-hmm. I, they Still will a lot be to be determined, yeah. Mm-hmm. They will be better than last season. Uh, if for nothing else, because I do think that the guys that are returning are, are a little bit better, natural improvement. And then there's the sheer volume of dudes. So, you know, you're not going to see Ray Vahasi play 55 snaps in the game. You know, there was a drop off maybe after 35 last year. I think he could be a 35 snap guy, be really good for you. So you've got, they're going to be fresher up front. And Mac talked a lot about how they wore down against Notre Dame in the fourth quarter, and they did. And they wore down. Look at how they were against the run against uh, Texas A&M in the fourth quarter as opposed to the second quarter. There was a difference. I don't think we'll see that as much this year. I don't know how good they could be on the high end. It's sort of like, you know, sometimes if you have a basketball team that they play 10 or 11 guys, that's a great thing. But may, but 
if there's not much of a drop off, okay, they've got a really good second team. Yeah. But maybe it also means they don't have a really good first team. So they never have a really, really high level of uh, five on the court at any one time. So they got a lot of guys on the defensive line, but are they going to have three out there that are phenomenal at any time? I don't know. We'll have to see how that plays out over the season. But they will be better because they have more numbers. They yeah. will be better because the young guys elevate the depth component or, or the, excuse me, the quality component, the talent component mm. up front. And I do think it gives them more options. And they have some guys that maybe have strengths in different areas. So you can use guys more situationally than they were able to before. You're not going to see Aaron Crawford type 90 snaps. Yeah. And Jason, Jason Strowbridge, guys playing 90 snaps and, and just wear them down to the nub in games. I think there's you're going to see a lot of different dudes. And, and you're going to see Javar and Ritzy play. Dude's huge, man. I mean, he, he looks the part. It looks very impressive in the drills I've seen him do. And even the scrimmage made some good plays. So I was very impressed with what I've seen from him. Yeah. I Playing agree. low is one of the hardest things for really big kids in the defensive line to learn how to do when they get to college. Because they don't have to in high school. Mm -mm. They throw guys around like rag dolls and they make plays. They get to college, they have to really, really work on their technique. Mm -hmm. And he looks like he's got pretty good technique. Not just he plays low, gets off the line, gets off the snap well, but how he's able to get around, uh, work work the offensive tackle, get around him. He did it a couple times today. In fact, Kevin actually said, let's watch Ritzy on this play. Remember mm -hmm. that? Yeah. And that was the play where he fought off the tackle, mm -hmm. got around him, and made, he didn't make a tackle, but he made, this, but he made the hit Mid and allowed the yeah. linebackers to come in and make the play. Now, this is in practice in April. We don't know what he's going to be like in August and September and October, but he looks like a guy who's going to play because, honestly, he looks like the rest of them. And remember, we don't have we didn't see Tamari Fox out there. Yeah, he's not out point. there right now. Mm -hmm. so that's another guy. And, and they've got Jaleel Taylor who's played some snaps. There's, they could have an experienced guy like Jaleel Taylor on the third wave. And Max said a few weeks ago, they want to go three waves on the front line defensively. Mm -hmm. And I think that they're on their way to achieving that. Yeah. I don't know how good the first wave is ever going to be, mm -hmm. but they're going to be pretty good in the second and third wave, and that will make them better because there because of the, there won't be as much of a drop off. As far as the offensive line goes, you know, we've been talking about them going between eight and ten, and, and coaches want to have eight go eight deep on the OL. But Mac and Phil Longo have actually said, you know, they could go to ten. They might be able to go go deeper than that because yeah, today I was really it. impressed with Malik McGowan today. Mm -hmm. he's another guy when you start talking about the depth the zoo is not practicing this spring so montillas is starting but montillas is the depth guy he's a reserve when a is back he starts montillas so your sixth guy is montillas mm -hmm. your seventh guy is johnson okay so they know they've got seven rock solid eighth guy maybe it's a dorna in fact we saw johnson they work at center and guard that's the, that's the versatility that he brings is huge Okay. Then you got to talk about, okay, who are the next guys? Well, they keep talking at William Barnes. You know what? He looks comfortable at right tackle. He does, yeah. He looks like he's at home at right tackle. Okay, so let's say that's nine. So how about Wyatt Tunal? How about Malik McGowan? And I'll tell you who running out there with the two some today was Diego Powell's, and he looks the part. You were raving about him two weeks ago. It's really hard for an offensive lineman to play as a true freshman. Yeah, but oh, yeah. you can see down the road where they've got guys that it's springtime right now, and we got pollen in the air, everything's blooming. You can see a guy like Diego Pants doing his own bloom and pollen thing within the, within the program as he learns how to be a college football player. So when you watch him, you think, well, it's not going to be too long before that guy's ready. Maybe not ready right now. Maybe not ready in October, but maybe he's ready in November. Someone goes down, you never know, and certainly he'll be a candidate next year to take over one of those tackle jobs. So they're in really, really good shape in both lines of scrimmage. I think the offensive line better shaped than defensive line because we know more what they have. And there's a very high end component there with those starters because a few of those guys are going to play in the NFL. Agreed. Yeah. And Diego Pounds, I will say this, I was doing shooting before the scrimmage, they were doing kind of O-line versus D-line drills, you know, just kind of, I think it was two versus three, three O-linemen, two guys blitzing and whatnot. And Diego Pounds absolutely pancaked somebody. I don't remember who it was. Might have been – I don't really know if I recognize. Could have been a walk-on for all I know. But bigger kid. I mean, not some scrawny kid like me running around out there. He absolutely pancaked the guy. So, a little, little – Let me comment on that real fast. That's a really good point. I'm glad you brought that up. Mm -hmm. One of the things that's also impressed me with the true freshman 
on both sides of the ball is they're not the, the physicality doesn't really seem to be affected them. No, too much. it doesn't. It doesn't at all. We go to linebacker very quickly. I know you're gonna want to you want to hit there in a second, but Ra Ra got clobbered by I think it was uh, uh, Kendall Carr. Yeah, I uh, think you're play. right. Something and like he that. had to adjust his helmet. Yeah, okay, well that's that. Mm-hmm. I, I've I've had my bell rung a little bit, but I'm okay. Not bell rung, but he got wall up there. On yeah, that it was, play. didn't look great. <laughs> had to adjust his helmet. Yeah, and he's just small. He's going to be bigger in six months than he is now. But the freshmen from what I saw today, they're embracing the physicality of it. I think that they're adjusting there, and that's important because the quicker they adjust to the physicality, other stuff will fall into place a lot quicker as well. Definitely. Second thing I kind of want to talk about: um, uh, three legit quarterbacks. I think it's safe to say that I think Carolina has that. Um, and you can maybe even say four with Boaz because we've kind of talked about him in the past. It's probably going to a, any other couple other programs in the ACC and definitely, you know, the power I think has a has a good chance of, of playing over there. But Criswell thought he looked good in the scrimmage, made some nice throws. Um, I thought Drake may look OK in the scrimmage, but you see the potential that he has. Had a, I think he had one pick that uh, Dede Hollins made a great play on in the corner of the end zone. It was more of a great play by him. Wasn't a great throw from Drake May. He probably completes that in high you. school. But yeah, good, like, it, 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 that was, we called that a film room special. Yeah, they'll go look at that one. He's already sure. watched it on film. He's like, ah, I see exactly what I did wrong. Yeah. You got to make those mistakes. And that's what's eighth practice in spring. Mm-hmm. That's a great time for Drake May to make those mistakes because he's got to learn. Mistakes exactly. are an okay thing. Mm-hmm. As as yeah, learns, especially for a young guy like him. I mean, he's in his, what, eighth practice today? You know what I mean? Yeah, and that was an outstanding sure. break by Day Day. Yeah, it was a great play by him. They're loaded back there, too. Yeah. They're loaded exactly. in the secondary. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but I think I think it's safe to say that Carolina, you know, you watch Sam Howell, and and granted, I mean, you watch Criswell in May and practice today, and Sam Howell definitely looks a lot more impressive than they do. And don't get it twisted. I mean, Sam Howell's one of the top quarterbacks in the country for a reason. But Criswell and, and Drake May, I think in the season, maybe not May right now, I think Carolina would feel comfortable throwing Criswell out there if they had to. Uh, obviously, it would be a bit of a drop off between him and Howell because Criswell just doesn't ha- hasn't played as much as Howell is for one thing. But I think ultimately, you look at that quarterback room, and I think if you're Mac, I think if you're Longo, who's obviously the O-line, oh, excuse me, offensive coordinator and the quarterback's coach, I think you're feeling pretty good about that position. Obviously, you want Howell to be in there for as long as he can and be a part of the program for as long as he can because you just don't get a lot of Sam Howells coming into your program. But, but I think overall, that quarterback position, it's safe to say that I think Carolina's got three legit quarterbacks and, and probably will even feel a lot better about it, you know, at the maybe early part of the mid part of the season once things get going. you got to have a quarterback ready outside of the starter because you never know. It just takes one play to, be, to become the starter. Mm-hmm. You know, the backup. Takes, yeah. I, think, I think the question is you know, with, with Criswell is how much of the offense could they run with him at quarterback? Agreed, yeah. Mm-hmm. So it looks like they're getting to where they need to be. I mean, you, you would like to ideally be able to bring in a backup and run your offense. Everyone else just does what they do. Whoever's in a quarterback is whoever's in a quarterback. You don't want to pull back in some areas. You don't want to trim some areas because it's easier to defend. It's easier to predict what they're going, what you're going to do. Uh, defenses don't have to deviate from what they typically do too much because they've got a beat on you if they know what you're going to do, unless you're just so darn good that you make like, like the yeah. Barney's team. So you know what's coming, but you can't stop us. Can't stop it. Kind of like Roy's I don't like team. Carol, I don't think like at that point yet. Yeah. But what I do think about Criswell is it looks to me like they're getting – they're on the right track to be able to run their full offense with him. Again, this is only the eighth practice of spring. So there's still a lot of a lot of a lot of time left. They have seven more yeah. practices, including the spring game uh, here in the next couple of weeks, and then they have the August practices. I would think by the time, may, maybe when they get to Virginia Tech, if something happened to Sam, they can put Criswell in there and run a lot of stuff. I think it's pretty clear right now that even though that's a battle, <clears throat> Criswell's ahead because he's more experienced. Oh, for he sure. The offense, he's adjusted to the speed of the game. I think that was one of the mistakes that Drake made. Just not used to corners that could change, that could cut like different that. level up here, man. It's a different level now, you know. And I mean, that's again, that's the value. We see so much of the value in kids coming in early, and we're seeing it big time with Drake May. So he'll go in the off season, work on stuff, watch film, and he'll catch up a ton in the off season. But but I think that they're long term. If you if you project down the road, I think they're in really good shape at quarterback because I think Drake May's going to be really really good. Chris Wells going to be really really good. Um, if Sam went down against Virginia Tech, I think they'd be in okay shape. I like what I saw from Criswell. I, I actually thought 
He looked confident. He commanded the position. He looked like the dude when he was out there. And that's huge because he looked like that. We saw him in the Showtime camp a couple of years ago. And Drake was out there too at that camp. But Chris was older. And he kind of said, like, this is my camp, guys. He was loud. He was vocal, but not in an annoying way, but in a leadership kind of way. Mm. So we saw a little bit of that from him today, maybe a lot of it from him today. And clearly he's growing and they're giving him a lot of work, giving him okay. a lot of work. Yeah. So it's good. Hopefully, I'm sure when we get back in August and we can, when they start fall camp, we're going to get a chance to see a few times. I can't wait to try to snapshot with this side of my brain what we saw from Drake today. And then take in from this side of my brain what we see from Drake and yeah. all this. I bet there's going to be an enormous difference. Okay. And he's already impressive. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, oh, yeah, but, he looks, but, but he looks like he's in his eighth practice. Sometimes. Exactly. You definitely see the potential. That's okay. Yeah, physique-wise, just the, what he does back there, mechanics, you definitely see the potential in him. But, yeah, I think he's still a ways off right now just because, like you said, he's just – so early into his North Carolina career. And, and I think either you or Kevin maybe have mentioned it when we were watching today, but I mean, we saw Sam Howell in some open practices to his first year. And it wasn't like he was, you know, you didn't watch him and say, oh, that's a future Heisman candidate right there. I mean, he looked decent. But when you're five, six, Jenna seven say? practices in, you know, yeah, maybe it was Jenna, I'll, yeah. I'll give Jenna Miller a shout out. What did she say? Today? She goes, I can't, I'm not going to do it. She doesn't really have, she has a little bit of an accent. She got yeah. like a little bit of that. Not like Dana King, though. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of hard to do Jenna. Though. Anyway. Mm-hmm. Mama Photog is what I call her. Yeah, yeah. My old mama. Um, she said, don't you all remember that Jason looked more impressive than Sam That's in the spring game two years ago? Yeah, it's a great point by her, yeah. So you can only, you know, we can read what we see, but we're not there all the time. We don't have, we don't see the lens that the staff does. So they, they see all the warts and they see all the great things and everything in between. We only see a few things because we're exactly. not, we don't have the trained eyes like they do. But I like what I see from that group. I like what I see from every group, to be honest with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's this been. program is just. It's on a Take different trajectory now. Yeah, it definitely looks more like a, you know, a legit top 25 program, you know, just oh, yeah. guys. Yeah, I think that's no doubt about it. Maybe even top 20. I mean, you know, they go to that <laughs> other five, but, but yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Definitely. I think, they're better. I think they're better than that. Mm-hmm. I would probably. And I'm, not, and I'm not one that goes in that direction real hard. No, you're I'm pretty, the pull, I'm the pull pretty back guy. Keel. Mm-hmm. I'm the temporary, you know, expectations pullback guy. I'm the eight and four all the time kind of guy. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. I, everyone thinks, oh, 11 and one. I'm like, yeah, I, I can see three yeah, or four yeah. losses there. <laughs> yeah. But I, I just think I'm, I'm so impressed with so many things about this program on the field, off the field and recruiting, how they do so, how they just go about so many different things. And, and one of the great things about being back at practice today is all the stuff we saw two weeks ago, I'm going to repeat what I said about 10 minutes ago, was reinforced today. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Agreed. I'm going to ask you before we wrap this thing up, we'll do that in a couple minutes. I want to ask you just real quick. I've kind of, those are kind of the two things that maybe stuck out to me the most. I know you mentioned some other things in the beginning that stuck out, but anything else or maybe one other thing in particular that stood out to you a lot could be a player, could be a group, could be a, a particular play during the scrimmage. But was there, you know, maybe one other thing that stuck out to you from today? Yeah. Ty Chandler. I, yeah. I hit on him a little bit, but I'm gonna go a little more in depth now. He was vocal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He was vocal today. Mm-hmm. One vocal two weeks ago. Looked a little bit more. He went first in the oh. drills. Yeah. He mm-hmm. went first in the drills. He was first with the with the ones out on the field. Again, I don't put a ton of stock into rotations, you know, drill rotations and stuff in the spring. I do a lot more so in August. But I kind of thought that they reached a competitive point in spring practice because, you know, Max said, with the freshmen and the new kids, don't worry about where you are in a rotation, you just you know, got to get used to learning how to practice like a college player and, and all the other Different. demands that are required, the speed, uh, everything else. But I kind of thought, I got the, the vibe today that they have fully entered in the competition standpoint of, uh, of spring, including with those young kids. So they're going to be put wherever rotation in the drills, wherever they are right now on the depth chart. Well, that goes for the new guy too, the new uh, the grad transfer. He went first. And he looked like the starter. He, he was very vocal, which shows that he's a lot more comfortable around these guys now. I'm sure it was kind of, you know, a little strange for him to be at a practice the first couple of weeks at North Carolina and not at Tennessee, the different colors, the different sounds of the coaches, the different scenery and all those kind of things. And, okay, I transfer here. I've got it. You kind of have to balance. I'm going to show them what I can do. You have to balance that with I've got to learn what to do so I can later show them really what I can do. And mm-hmm. I think he's probably been working through that and 
to hear him as vocal as he was when I was over by the running backs today, I think it's a huge plus because you've got to have a voice in that room. And he's the older guy in there by far. So it's ideal if the older guy is the loudest voice in that room. And, you know, British can be loud in that room too. And the guys respect him because he's a really good special teams player and he's a grinder. But the, you also want the loudest voice in the room to be a producer. Mm-hmm. And that helps big Make time. Example, His yeah. message will be heard. He can lead a little bit better. In British, you can maybe just reinforce what Chandler says. And uh, so I think that room is in better shape now than I did two weeks ago because of that. I think the staff probably wanted him to step forward. You don't want to bring in a grad transfer and have him third in the rotation. Yeah, you don't bring important. guys like that into programs like this unless they're going to start. Agreed. You got to earn it. You got to grind and get it. And I think right now what we saw today is, is Ty Chandler's in the process of secure, not securing that spot, but he's well on his way to, to satisfying what they were hoping that they would get from him. And that room, by the way, it looks pretty good. The number two guy, DJ Jones, we love his potential. We talked about him a couple weeks ago. And Josh Henderson today. He looked good today, yeah. Mm-hmm. Came in as a four, four star. And he actually looked like a four star. He made us a couple today. impressive plays today. He did. He had one had some breakaway run, speed and a 53 yard well. touchdown run. Yeah. I mean, he looked, I think right now, just based on what we've seen, you know, people say running back by, by committee. Well, they like to use three running backs anyway. If you want to call committee or not, go right ahead. I don't really care. But I think they're in pretty good shape there and they're going to be in better shape when they go to Blacksburg. Agreed, AJ. I think it's a good place to wrap this one up, man. Yeah, just a lot of like I think you said it earlier, and I think it really summed up the two open practices that we've seen so far. This car- this program looks better. It looks like a legitimate top program in the country from size, speed, the way they practice, the energy they have, the coaches, the way everything is on and off the field. So I think if you're a Carolina fan, you got to be feeling really good about it, really excited as this team gets closer and closer to the spring game and obviously the season, which not too far away now. We still got some months there, but you know, it, it'll, it'll be here before you know it. Trust us. <laughs> Let's have off season first. Yeah. I'm about to say, I need a little R and R real quick and then we'll, then I'll be ready to go recharge the batteries. Right. Yeah. You need a nap or two. I need a nap or two. You need a nap for a couple of days, but yeah. <laughs> I think it's a good place to wrap it up though. AJ, I've been Jacob Turner. He's been Andrew Jones as always guys. Like we mentioned in the beginning too, just click the link in the description. Head on over to tarhillillustrated.com. Sign up before April 25th. You don't pay until August 1st. Get a ton of access to stuff that you just don't get access to unless you're signed up as a part of our premium community. So go and head over there to tarhillillustrated.com after this video is done and take advantage of that opportunity. As always, guys, if you enjoyed the video, like, share, subscribe to our channel. See you in the next one. Thanks. Thanks.